So, hello and welcome to the first episode of Behind the Scenes, uh, a video log where I delve into the sometimes mysterious and captivating world of uh, writers and their creative processes. Uh, I'm your host, Clive Gilson. Uh, I'm a writer. Uh, I have four uh, fiction titles to my name, plus uh, other sundry pieces. Uh, I've worked as a journalist and uh, one or two other uh, associated roles. And I'm currently the editor of Tales from the World's Firesides, uh, a project uh, hoping to, uh, to save and uh, republish folklore and fairy tales from around the world before uh, some of them, uh, at least, uh, fade from memory. Now today, uh, I'm exploring the age-old question, how do writers, or more precisely, how do I, uh, get my ideas? Our journey begins, then, with observation. Writers are typically keen observers of the world around them, drawing inspiration from everyday life, uh, from bustling city streets to serene natural landscapes. Every detail can become a potential source of creativity. However, for my first novel, Songs of Bliss, the observation uh, that came to me uh, was from an unexpected source. I rather fell in love with the part animated film of the graphic novel Sin City. What I saw in that film was how cinematic a written story can be. Taking that as a cue, I developed an old story about a father seeking redemption and vengeance for his daughter's suffering at the hands of a local gangster. Not the most original plotline, I, I, I guarantee. But nonetheless, the, the act of storyboarding that and creating a set of mental visual scenes led me to plan the entire novel out as if I was shooting a film, which influenced the style and the presentation immensely. In fact, rather like a film, the story is told entirely in the present tense. Of course, the usual thing about observability is that proverbial park bench moment uh, where we watch people pass by or events unfold. Each person has a story, a unique journey, which often leads us to think, what if those strangers' lives intersected in unexpected ways? It's not that I discount that in any way. In fact, you know, I use it myself constantly. There's nothing better than to sit quietly in a pub or a public space watching the world unravel in front of you. I guess all I'm saying is that observation comes in many forms and, and sizes and we shouldn't be ever afraid uh, of trying different things. Another aspect of inspiration for, uh, for writers where you know, we think about ideas and where they come from um, is the fact that many writers infuse their work with personal experience. You transform your own emotions and memories into uh, what you hope will be literary magic. And writing has always been one of my ways of navigating through life's twists and turns. Um, there's a number of pieces, for example, that came out of the, uh, the sad passing of my, uh, my late wife uh, when she uh, lost her battle with cancer. And those are intensely personal moments, but nonetheless, they're still things that I wanted to share. Uh, and those experiences are you know, good and bad. There are many you know, from different sources are absolutely vital to, to what we do. And while I don't always employ personal experience in, in every story that I write, I do try to weave my experiences in a, in a reasonably sort of overt fashion into at least some of the stories. But then again, whenever I reread uh, what I think is a, a non-personal tale uh, after the, uh, the event, it, it becomes usually suddenly obvious that uh, I'm in that one too somewhere. Of course, reading is another thing that directly uh, influences us in terms of the, uh, the observability of the world around us because of the bias and the exposure it gives us to different ways of writing or different ideas. Reading, reading is a cornerstone of, of, the, of the process. Exposure to diverse literature expands uh, a writer's imagination. It's, it's almost like a symbi symbiosis, a symbiotic relationship between you know, the book read and the idea that is generated. And we've got to understand, of course, that uh, there is bias and influence in that. But I don't think there's any harm in being inspired by others, you know, unless you rip them off entirely. I mean, in which case that's, uh, that, that's not, just not done. But I mean, how many times have Shakespeare's stories been told in different guises? It's not detrimental to anyone involved if the thing is done well with panache and with originality somewhere in that mix. You know, the, the, the great legends of the past you know, have been repeated time and again. No problem with that. It's, as long as we do it well, it's fine. All of which helps us to reach a point where we, we consider the creative mind, I suppose. You know, this is a, a quick sort of potted run through some of the uh, uh, 
benefits of observation um, and how it inspires. But you know, imagination is an intangible force uh, driving creativity. It plays a crucial role in the formation and the development of ideas. It's the playground you know, where ideas come to life. It's, it's about letting our minds wander and embracing the fantastical and daring to explore the uncharted territories that uh, our creativity opens up for us. In my second novel, for example, uh, A Solitude of Stars, you know, I finally got to grips with a narrative that I've been telling myself on and off for nearly 30 years. Um, I mean, just between you and I, uh, one used to take a, uh, a long hot bath and I would just soak away for a little while and I would just run through this story again and again and again and again until I had the characters, I had the places, the, uh, the scenarios so well mapped out. It was uh, almost as much fun just thinking about the story as, as it ever was in terms of getting to, to grips with it. But as I say, I've been telling myself the story for nearly 30 years and I'm, I'm not sure why I didn't try to write the thing down before that, but the bottom line is when I did, uh, that imagined world was full and bright, vibrant and so clearly formed. Another thing that we should, I think, observe as much as we can is, is the, the art of collaboration and how that allows us to grow and to, to develop. You know, writers often find inspiration in conversations and, and collaborations. Um, when we share and we bounce ideas off each other, it really does ignite that creative fire. And it takes that simple observation that you might have made in you know, a situation in that proverbial park or what have you. It allows you to have that, that ability to start developing the story with someone else's input. I don't know if you ever played that sort of game where you look at a, a person or you look at a, a particular uh, situation and you play that sort of what if, you know, you take a, a simple sort of boat on a pond and imagine it to be a pirate ship or to be uh, smugglers off the coast of some far distant shore and you tell your story and you bounce off each other. It's that sort of process I think that, that really does uh, uh, inspire me sometimes. I mean collaborating with others, you know, engaging in discussions, exchanging ideas, it just opens doors uh, and really does help to, uh, to get that inspiration flowing. You know, and sometimes the most brilliant bits of the, the stories that, that emerge come from those collective creative energies. Um, I refer to my first novel, Songs of Bliss, uh, and realising through, uh, through watching a particular thing on TV um, how I could realise that story. But part of that also came from the fact that uh, I sat with my, my son-in-law and we talked about the, the idea and I talked about the, the concept of writing a, uh, a proper novel but based on a, a, a graphic sort of novel style. Uh, and it was through that really that the, develop, the, the idea properly developed and, and actually took flight and, and came into fruition. And I think for, for today that's probably um, enough of a little run through. Uh, so I think uh, there you have it folks. Um, a quick spin through the, uh, the mirrored corridors of inspiration uh, in the, uh, on this multifaceted journey of, uh, uh, to, to tell the story of how writers get their ideas. I'm sure we'll come back to, to more of this uh, in the future. Um, and this short piece is by no means meant to be comprehensive. Um, we'll also be coming back on, on a number of other sort of themes over the course of the next uh, few sort of weeks and, and months as, uh, as these uh, little videos develop. But I guess, put simply, whether it's through observation or personal experience, reading, imagination or collaboration, the creative process is probably as diverse as the writers of this world themselves. Um, trying to encapsulate it or to, to, to pigeonhole it is, is probably impossible. In the first instance, though, I hope this episode has given you a, a little bit of a glimpse into the fascinating world behind the pen. Until next time, take care.